Welcome to the Savage Productions YouTube channel. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Savage Productions YouTube channel. Today we have a special video for you. Uh, so if you remember, this is the engine that we actually disassembled in one video and reassembled in a completely different style video where it was all creative and you know edited into music and all that stuff, which a lot of you actually liked. So I'm glad uh, that you enjoyed that. So this is gonna be a completely different kind of video again. This one is going to be how to install push rods, rocker arms, and guide plates on your brand new trick flow heads. Uh, this will apply to a bunch of different heads, obviously. These are the 11R170s, which we sell here at Savage Performance. Uh, we are a trick flow dealer, in case you're wanting to get any of those. All right, so this engine, uh, if you don't know, is a, was it 20 over 302? So like a 304, 306, something yeah, like that. 304, I think, comes to um, And what we're doing, we put a uh, trick flow cam in it. You know the specs on the cam? The valve lift on the intake's 499, exhaust is 510. So this is the um, TrickFlow 11R top end kit which we sell. Um, it, bring, it comes with these 11R heads. These are the 11R 170cc's. It's called 11R because the intake valve is canted at 11 degrees and then the uh, exhaust is canted at 13. Yeah, so these are CNC street ported heads. Uh, they can come bare or assembled, you know, uh, however you want to order them. Let me go through the parts here. Um, we have the push rods here. We already got these all cleaned off. Uh, what you want to do when you get these push rods, just, you know, spray them off with brake clean, spray brake clean through the hole, and then take your air hose, blow them off, and also blow out the holes. We have the poly locks here, and they have this uh, insert, which is actually how you kind of tighten it up and set it. Uh, one of them is actually missing it. We think it might be in the bottom of the box. Hopefully it is. But uh, if that happens, you know, you just contact us if you're bonding through us or contact TrickFlow, which we're going to have to get another one of those. Uh, it's only on one of them. Uh, here we have the guide plates, and then here are the bolts that hold down the guide plates. So we're basically going to show you how to um, adjust these to where your push rods uh, aren't hitting on the side of it, and then also adjust the rockers whenever you put those on. Uh, and here are the rockers which these are the TrickFlow 1.6 roller rockers. Yep. We'll go over that here in a bit. Yep. All right, so let's go over how we do this here. Yep. So first things first, so, put the guide plate on with these little holes facing up, if it's yeah, not yep. obvious because that's where the push rods go through. Well, it even tells you up right there. Look at that right there. Yeah. And these, these are not too adjustable. The, yeah. the holes are pretty tight. Um, but a lot of these guide plates you buy, you can, they'll be two piece sometimes or they're two piece. Right. Um, even the ones that are not two piece, the holes in the guide plates will be oblong. So you, that gives you flex flexibility to adjust because you want to make sure that the, the rocker arm is laying on here equally on both sides, right. which we'll show you that in a minute. But so these, I just kind of, I just want to put them right in the middle. Yep. Just kind of eyeball it in the middle. Yep. Typically when I kind of hold it. When you tighten it? Yeah, I just, I'll tighten just a little bit. When you tighten this one, it tries to flare up on this one. So I just barely snugged it. And then I'm gonna tighten this one first. All right. And then these are supposed to be torqued to what? These are torqued to 55 foot pounds. Is that what you have the torque wrench set at right now? Yeah. So you're torquing it fully down? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it doesn't take much. Yeah, 55 foot pounds. And that's with, um, you can just put 30 weight motor oil or you can use Molly Lube on it. Right. But they, they said it's, you know, usually it's a little bit different between oil and, and Molly Lube um, on your, your torques, but these they just say 55 foot pounds. And I'll just kind of double check. Yep, so then what you're looking for, I'm trying to angle this right here perfectly. You want to try to just eyeball it and make sure that the geometry on this looking right yep. here is pretty even and, really and like we said these are pretty easy to adjust because uh, they're one piece and uh, the holes are you know really tight tolerances so here's and push rods it's always good to lube the, the ends up um, just another note these lifters are all brand new I soaked them in oil um, overnight oh, yep so they're all you know totally filled <laughs> and they've already got yeah lubrication there but I just go ahead you can put um, molly lube not molly lube but a uh, break-in like bearing lube on there if you want um, 
Or just oil. I just put the oil on it. It's yeah. Fine. We typically don't do the break-in lube unless it's like, you know, race motor. So you just drop the push rods in there like that. What you should do, and you could always do this before you even put them on, but I usually just put a little dab of oil in there because you got roller bearings inside here. These trunnions, they call them. Yep. I just kind of, uh, you know, put a little bit of oil in there. And a little bit on the tip. Yep. And a little bit in the in there. push rod hole. And I just kind of run across there. Yep. So the reason these are roller rockers is because of that, that roller tip. Yep. And then also, you want to make sure, if you notice, see how this has got a round side to it? Yep. This side has got a flat side. Yep. Flat side always comes up because your poly lock is flat. Yep. It goes down. Right. If a lot of times people don't realize it and they'll put it like that and you you will have a problem. Yep. If you don't <laughs> if you don't do it. So So Thanks. now you basically just slide that on there. Yep. Also too, I'll do a little bit of a little oil on the threads, which you should oil up the threads all the time. Put it on there. So at this point, once these are all tight, I just want to look here and see that these roller tips are going to be on that valve stem pretty even. Right, just back and forth. And usually I'm going all the way this way because you got to have a little bit of movement there. And it looks, it actually looks good. So it looks like that one's a little bit off to the left more than it is to the right. Yeah, but then and if then you look this at one. this one, it looks like it's off to the right more than the left. Right. So since it's a one piece, you don't really have that much adjustability on it. Yeah. If it's a two piece, you can kind of get it a little bit better. Um, but it's basically, yeah. you know, trying to find the lesser of the evils here. Yeah, so. Just kind of cutting they're... cutting the difference in half. Yeah, I mean, they're but they're dead. I mean, they're pretty much dead on compared to, that's all you can do. Right. If you There's not much movement there, but if you moved it one way, then you know one's going to be you know, on the other one's going to be way off. So, right. Um, but there's not really an issue with those like that. So that's all good. So then the other part that you want to check is where the push rod is. There's almost no way to get it fully off of this guide plate, which is fine because it's a guide plate. It's supposed to guide the yeah. push rod uh, where it's supposed to go. Um, but you also don't want it fully, you know, fully cocked up against one side like that. Yeah. You want it just kind of floating around in the middle as this is floating around in the middle. These poly locks, they're just thrown in there, screwed in. I usually screw them out. That way it gives, oh. you, yeah. gives you enough room to adjust. So these little studs. Yeah, I screw them out. Not all the way, I just screw them out. So, and that way they won't come in contact with the top of the stud. So we are going to adjust. We might as well just adjust them while we're putting them on. Yeah, I'd say so. So, so as part of the adjusting, um, you always want to follow you know, you want to be able to turn the engine over. So you, we usually start on number one, uh, just so we can put it on top dead center and know exactly where it's going to be. Uh, but then, you know, we could follow the rest of it. But just because we already had it back here on uh, number eight cylinder, yeah. Um, when we were checking piss, piston valve clearance, we'll go ahead and do this one first. Just normal rotation of the motor. You just want to, when you adjust valves uh, or, roll, or the rollers, you want to uh, be on the base circle of the cam. Yep. And so, Typically, you got, this was the intake, this is the exhaust. Um, when the exhaust just starts to open, the intake is on the base a little bit of cam. So I noticed it just started to open. Okay. So this also doesn't doesn't matter if you're on the, um, on the intake of the compression stroke, right? No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's, because the... I mean, because with the geometry, it's going to raise the same no matter what stroke you're on. Yeah. So it kind of does take a little bit of variability out of it, which is good. The exhaust valve here will start to open. The exhaust is which one? This one here. That's the intake. The exhaust is on this side, intake's on this yeah. side. So watch it start to open as I'm rotating it right there. Yep. So that's and the cam pushing it up. Yep, that's the cam pushing it up. So when the exhaust valve starts to open, mm -hmm. you adjust the intake side. The intake side will be on the on the base circle. Right. On the, the bottom. So you want to stop it right there. You want to stop it right as, there. As soon as the exhaust comes up. And then we're going to see all this play. What we're going to do is take that play out by turning this. And normally you can just turn this push rod. And as soon as it 
the play comes out, you can feel this tighten up a little bit. Right. I mean, yeah, or you know, some guys do this and they'll keep doing this until you have nothing left, but it's easier just to spin this and yeah. turn this nut and as you turn it, you'll feel it tighten up and then right. that's the aim plays is gone out of it. At that point you stop. So we so tight once, once you have the in all the play taken out of the all the, the slack taken out of this, you know, some guys will tighten these a quarter turn, half a turn, three quarters, right. one full turn's a little bit much. Um, we usually go a half a turn. Right. So I'll just put this. Just try to line it up at just, some, some cardinal direction here. Yeah, like right there, bring it around. Half a turn. Half a turn. Pretty simple. And that's it. So, so now this definitely shouldn't be able to be twisted. Okay, so now that you have your nut tightened to half a turn, screw this all the way back in, uh, tighten it down, and then you want to hold the nut here before you tighten this. Uh, really, there's no inf good information online on what to torque that to, but we usually just do about 25 foot-pounds. That seems to, um, it feels right, and that's about, you know, kind of in between what you will find people online saying. Um, but yeah, that's the inside, inside nut inside of there. So you don't want to move, you don't want to rotate the engine over until you're done uh, torquing this one down. Okay, so now the intake do is done. Uh, the exhaust had just started coming up. Yeah, the exhaust is coming up. So what you do is you let the exhaust come all the way up. It's going to go all the way back down. And then the intake's going to come up. Yep. It's going to come up and then start going back down. So at about halfway back down is where you stop. And now the exhaust is on its base load. If you notice, see it's all the way down. Yep. And that's pretty much it. You do basically repeat the same exact process with the exhaust. Yeah, we're just going to turn this until we, I can feel it tighten up, get the old, all the play out. Yep. We're going to go a half a turn from there. We did switch to the wrench because we're going to have to use the wrench to uh, Tighten that center thing up anyway. Yeah, screw so, this on in until nope. it bottoms out. Get the handy dandy torque wrench. Pop her on there. Hold it with this. Bring it down. Boom. There it is. Bingo. So we went ahead and put all the guide plates on just because it's a lot easier. Uh, we made sure that they were all centered and all that. But <laughs> enjoy these pictures. Alright, we got all the rock our arms on. It sucks that we don't have the poly lock, but we just lift it out of this one right here. So. So then for the guys worrying about having to readjust these from time to time, especially after uh, you break the new new heads and new rockers and lifters, what do you suggest with that? No, you don't have to. I mean, as long as you adjust them right the first time and you make sure that the poly locks are tight. These are a, a hydraulic uh, lifter. They're not a solid uh, hydraulic lifter. You generally don't have to readjust them. Right. As long as they're adjusted right the first time. Uh, you know, some guys may adjust them after a while. But uh, if it was a solid lifter, you have to adjust it. Instead of turning it uh, a half a turn like we did, yep. you have to adjust it with a fuel gauge. There right. has to be, you know, a space there um, for a solid lifter. Yep. And, um, Which we actually have a video on that uh, when we were adjusting the valves on, on or the rockers on my car. Um, I have a link to that right there yeah, if you want to check that out. Yours has a solid roller cam in it. And those you do have to readjust from time to time. Right. Typically though, those are you know race engines, so you'll be underneath the valve covers quite often anyway. How often would you say when we're going to be racing that car, how often do we need to be adjusting them? After every, every race or every other race? Or? Yeah, after every race, really. Yeah. You know, you, you don't really have to. You can, because we, if you notice, if you remember, we also have a stud girdle. Right. Which really keeps everything in line. Yeah. So it, there's not a lot of flexing. So you don't have to adjust them as often. Right. So we could, you could probably adjust them, you know, every three or four races, really. But. Yeah. Well, depends on how many rounds I go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, if you're doing any of that, it's really good to get these kind of um, valve cover gaskets because these are the reusable ones. And let's see, we've been running these for a long time. Sometimes they do end up kind of breaking and snapping, which, you know, then you might want to go ahead and get new ones. But this is the part number for the 302, the reusable ones here. 
those are very useful to get and we pretty much put these on every build that we do because those cork ones they pretty much suck it for this video thank you all so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please click the like button uh subscribe if you want to see more how-to videos or more videos on this particular car or any of the other projects that we have going on but that's gonna be it thank you all for watching see you all in the next video Oh,